Right, David Can here with a question from the IB Question Bank in the style of what you find in your Hayes and Harris Math SL textbook in Chapter 8b. In this question, what we're dealing with is a circle. Uh, it's got a radius r, and the center's here at O, and points A, B, and C are on the circle. Angle A, O, C is an unknown angle theta. We do know the area of the sector O, A, B, C. So that's this section in here. And we're told that that area is 4 thirds of pi. We're also told that the length of the arc, A, B, C, is 2 thirds of pi. So this length is 2 thirds of pi. We want to use this information to find the value of r and theta, the value of the radius and theta. So we're asked to find two things, and we're asked to find them at the same time. So this is our clue that we're probably going to wind up dealing with simultaneous equations. We're going to try and solve for two variables at the same time. To do that, we need two equations using two pieces of information. Well, the pieces of information we have are the area of the sector and the length of the arc. So let's set up our two equations, one for the arc length and that's equal to r theta. And we'll set up our second equation, the sector area. And that's 1 half r squared theta. And remember, this only works when theta is in radians. We know the arc length. It's 2 thirds. And r and theta are unknown. The sector, length, sector area is also known. That's 4 thirds of pi. And that's equal to 1 half r squared theta. There's a little simplification we can do. We have a 1 half on this side, so let's multiply both sides by 2, and we'll get 8 pi on 3 is equal to r squared theta. All right. At this point, we're looking at an r squared in one of our equations, so you might be thinking that we're going to need to work with quadratics. That's a fair thought. That was my first thought. But I think that there is a way to solve this that will avoid the situation. Because here we have r theta. And here we have r squared theta. And r squared theta is the same thing as r times r times theta. That's what r squared is, r times r. Which means that we have r times theta. Just like over here, r times theta. What that means is that 2 thirds of pi is r theta. 2 thirds of pi is r theta, and that's the same as this r theta, and we can make that substitution. So we'll get 8 thirds of pi is equal to r times, not r theta, but 2 thirds of pi. And now we have lots of the same things on both sides of this equation. We have a pi and a pi. We have a division by 3 and a division by 3. When we cancel all that out, we get 8 equals 2 times r, or r equals 4. So now we have the radius. That's 4, and we didn't have to work with quadratics. Let's take this result and plug it in over here. We know that 2 thirds of pi is r theta. But we know that r is 4, so 2 thirds of pi is 4 times pi. I said pi, but it's actually theta, sorry. 2 thirds of pi is 4 theta. To simplify this, uh, we can divide by 4. We can also try simplifying by dividing by 2 on each side. Let's do that. So we'll divide both sides by 2. And we'll get 1 third of pi is equal to 2 theta. And then we can divide by 2 again, and we can get 1 sixth of pi is equal to theta. And from that, we get our results. Theta is a sixth of pi, and r is 4.